What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out the first and last TV 14 matches in WWE Bill to Bill. Now, someone has sent this to me on Twitter, and the timing of this video couldn't be more perfect. You all know what's been rumored to uh, be happening in WWE. They're supposedly on Monday Night Raw. Um, they're supposedly going back to TV 14 rate, uh, rating. And um, we're not sure if it's going to happen as soon as uh, the supposed leak. Supposedly, it was supposed to happen on the July 18th of Monday Night Raw. But now there's sources saying it may not happen on that episode. So we're not sure if Monday Night Raw or when it will go to TV 14, back to TV 14. But we will see how things play out. So it only makes sense to go back to when WWE or WWF at the time went to TV 14 and then when it actually ended. So we're going to check this out. Hopefully they do make that transition at some point. But like I was saying in my video talking about it, none of it really matters unless the storylines and the booking is done correctly but as long as Vince McMahon has control over that we really don't it's really a toss-up you know what I'm saying so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support on the channel man and uh let's get right into this thing for the past 13 years all of WWE's TV shows have been rated PG even back in the 80s and the 90s <clears throat> WWE's content was made for younger viewers and they mm -hmm. even resembled a live action cartoon However, those kids eventually grew up and stopped watching WWE. The company knew it had to change, and this brought around the Attitude Era. Yep. This is a much edgier, adult version of the WWE people had grown up with, and they started watching again. With WWE's content being aimed at older audiences, that meant their shows had to change from PG to, to TV-14. So when did this happen? Surprisingly, it wasn't until 1999 that WWE officially made the change. On January 18th, Fans tuned into Raw and were greeted by a TV 14 icon. Damn. At this Will that be happening soon? Will we tune into Raw and see a TV 14 rating? Uh, I wish it was going to be uh, on this upcoming Monday Night Raw. Maybe it will be still. But hopefully soon we will see the TV 14 rating and maybe get some more adult themed storylines. We'll see point, the Attitude Era was in full effect, and the first TV-14 match in WWE embodied almost everything this era of the company was about. The hardcore champion Road Dogg was set to defend his championship against the vampire Gangrel. Wow. Fitting with the match type, Road Dogg attacked his opponent from behind with a stick. Gangrel turned things around quickly by spraying red liquid into the champion's <laughs> eyes. Gangrel assaulted the D.O. double G on the outside <laughs> until Road Dogg countered with an Irish whip. The hardcore champion soon took the fight into the crowd and beat the challenger right in front of the fans. The vampire began making a comeback, the vampire. but ended up thrown <laughs> over the barricade and landing on the floor. After nearly two minutes, the match finally got into the ring. Road Dog brought in a table, but thanks to a low blow, Gangrel is able to powerbomb the champion through the wooden surface. Gangrel didn't get left out of the fun though, as Road Dog gave him a taste of the table with a DDT. Road Dogg's next move was to set up a second table. Oh, man, they were going all out. Like before, this gave Gangrel the tables. enough time to recover. Oh! He took back control. Unlike last time, the champion avoided getting thrown through a table thanks to a steel chair. After getting Gangrel set, Road Dogg went for an elbow drop, but the table didn't break. Ah, uh, the DOD gotta do it again. A leg drop, and then an elbow drop, and finally <laughs> the table split. Damn! That's a, that was a strong-ass table. That's a Kanye West table, if you know the meme reference. Damn, and it barely broke. That was a strong table. <laughs> Road Dogg whipped and suplexed his opponent onto the piece oh, of furniture for a good measure. It still he didn't break all the way. Two chairs Damn! The head, allowing the champion to retain his title. While there was a lot more to the Attitude Era than hardcore wrestling, yeah. this match fit well with WWE's transition to TV-14. Tables getting destroyed, sticks getting snapped over people's bodies, yeah. wrestlers fighting in the crowd, this is the kind of craziness that went on in the Attitude Era. The talent involved in the match was also a good fit. Both Road Dogg and Gangrel felt like they were characters made specifically for an adult audience, so having them in WWE's first TV-14 match makes sense. That's crazy, did not know that, man. The match wasn't a masterpiece or yeah. anything, just a fun match that was perfect for the Attitude Era Damn, fans. that chair shot, After though. After Road Dogg and Gangrel's hardcore brawl, WWE continued producing edgy content uh -huh. and amassed a huge following. They eventually became so big that they absorbed their competition. 
In 2001, WCW and ECW were bought by WWE, making WWE the only major wrestling company yep. in the US. Around this time, WWE also said farewell to the Attitude Era. This ushered in the Ruthless, Ruthless Aggression, Aggression era. era. While there were differences, WWE continued to be rated TV-14, and their shows were intended for an adult audience. As years went by though, the content slowly started getting toned down. The wild and raunchy characters and storylines of the Attitude mm -hmm. Era were being let go in favor of- And we know why. The bottom dollar, WWE saw, well Vince saw a lucrative opportunity to kind of switch it up because there was no competition. With no competition sometimes breed complacency. There was really no competition. And some could say maybe TNA, but TNA really wasn't competition, if you want to be honest. They weren't. You know, it was just the alternative, but they weren't really actual competition. WWE had it all sold up. So they started, they wanted to get more investors, more money, more sponsors. So they toned down on the blood and the violence and all this other stuff for the more kid-friendly type show. And, of course, it, it kind of drove more people away from wrestling because, you know, they didn't want to see that. They wanted to see some, 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 you know, like they wanted to see fights and brawls and more mature storylines. I'm okay with them doing away with the brawl and panty match because as you get older, it's just like, I mean, come on, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like it's cool, but, you know, trying to get into that side of actual women being taken seriously, I'm okay with that. And some of the other you know, gimmicky things. I'm okay with them taking it away for, you know, to, you know, f make it more kid-friendly. But at the same time, they kind of took a back seat. The wrestling wasn't the focus. The storylines wasn't the focus. It was just all to cater to kids and pretty much sponsors to get as much money as possible. ...of a cleaner, wider appealing product. This continued for several years until it was time for a change. July 21st, 2008 mm. would be the last time Raw was TV-14. Damn. While the first match of the TV-14 era was for the Hardcore Championship, the last match, nearly a decade later, was for the World Heavyweight Championship. Oh. The champion CM Punk agreed to face Batista in a rematch. After their previous title match one night earlier ended in disqualification due to interference by Kane. Unfortunately, the Devil's Favorite Demon wasn't finished. As the animals gain set for his match with Punk, the Big Red Machine came out and chokeslammed Batista. CM Punk ran in and got Kane out of the ring, but the damage had already been done. Despite not being 100%, the animal refused to call it quits, <laughs> and the match officially started. CM Punk started out in control by locking in a headlock. Batista eventually fought out of it and took Punk down with his shoulder, but due to Kane's assault, the animal... Y'all remember when you used to have, like, championship matches? Like, the main championship matches sometimes on the show? Y'all remember those days? They used to do it more frequently than they do now. You rarely see champion, like, we're talking about the top champions. You rarely see that happen. You do. It's a rarity now. Mainly because Roman Reigns is not really here much and, you know, how that goes. But, anyway. <laughs> I wasn't able to capitalize. The Chicago native got back to his feet and landed several punches and kicks on his opponent. Batista managed to end the champion's attack with a big boot and did get some offense in, but was quickly shut down by a swinging neckbreaker. The straight edge wrestler started using his feet to viciously attack the injured spine and head of the challenger. When that didn't get the pin, Punk got Batista back on his feet, which turned out to be a mistake. Before Batista could take control, CM Punk wisely put his opponent back on the mat. The animal tried to make a comeback, but didn't have the strength to build any momentum. They were the really selling that, that, uh, that attack. targeting the animal's back. Batista would keep absorbing abuse from Punk, and whenever he got up, the Chicago native would always knock him back down. The animal saw the match flash before his eyes when Punk hit his signature running knee and bulldog, but Batista managed to kick out. Punk went to hit another one of his iconic moves, a top rope clothesline, but at the last second, the challenger countered with a spine buster. The animal then became unleashed. Batista <laughs> threw the champion all around the ring, connecting with moves Oh, he tapped move. in. The crowd became unglued, and Batista was signaling for the Batista bomb. Before he could hit his finisher, JBL Fucking ran in JBL. and attacked the animal, <laughs> ending the match in disqualification. 
John Cena ran in what to make the? a save, but accidentally hit Batista in the what process. The? <laughs> this led to a crazy brawl between the two to close out the end of the TV-14 era. <laughs> that was just complete was chaos. Off the TV-14 era, oh, man. Enough main event. As you can tell, the match was being used to set a bigger storyline, yeah. so it's difficult to look at it critically. Comparing the first and last TV-14 era. And that was kind of CM Punk's kind of his gripe. When he became the world heavyweight champion the first few times, it's like his matches sometimes, his feet, it felt like his matches weren't bad, but a lot of times it was set up to other things. Hell, his main championship runs for sometimes felt like they were just setups to other bigger storylines outside of the WWE championship. So I know that was part of his gripe. He never really felt like the guy. Even when he had the championship that says, you're the guy. 14 matches, the first one from 1999 definitely had Attitude Era written all over Of course. It. CM Punk vs. Batista, on the other hand, felt more in line with the family-friendly direction WWE was headed. It is ironic that Batista wrestled in the last TV-14 match, since he didn't like WWE's change to PG because he felt it hurt the show. Not too surprising, the animal leaved WWE about two years after the change. Mm -hmm. CM Punk would stay for a bit longer, but eventually left. Yep. Funny enough, when Punk returned to wrestling, it was on a TV-14 rated show, yep. AEW Rampage. Now I know, there was that episode of SmackDown in 2020 that was rated TV-14, but that was- Whoa, really? I guess it because it you know they had something to do with, uh, I forgot that group, that Retribution? They tried to do something with them, and it, it fell apart. So, wow, I did not know that. So, there actually was an episode of Raw. Was this Raw? This looks like it was, well, maybe this was SmackDown. I don't know. Let me see if this was, yeah, this looked like this was SmackDown. So, was there was an episode. Show, AEW Rampage. Wow, I didn't know, I know that. There was that episode of SmackDown. There we go, yeah. 20, that was rated TV-14, but that was a one-time deal. The true TV-14 era was 1999 to 2008. So with that in mind, do you think WWE needs to go back to being TV-14? I would love to hear your responses. And it's crazy because he filmed this video. When was this uh, video made? This video was made, I want to say, uh, in 2021, October 1st, 2021. So now fast forward, 2022, and we're talking about WWE going back to TV-14 for Monday Night Raw. So, I mean... This was cool. It, you know, I, a lot of this I didn't even know. I didn't even know there was one episode of a TV-14 show on SmackDown. So that that was pretty cool recently. Um, and I didn't know that was the first and the last match of the TV-14 era. But I will say this. The rumors have been going. People have been talking about this all on social media. I'm sure the network heads at USA, they see this. I'm sure Vince and everybody else sees a lot of people's excitement for being tv 14 again now if i'm them and supposedly this doesn't like it wasn't supposed to get leaked if i'm them i call an audible if i'm them i call an audible and i make monday night raw tv 14 and i would announce that too on their official social medias you know what I'm saying? A lot of people will be more tuned. A lot of people will definitely tune in just because the rating change. People that, you know, hadn't watched wrestling, they'd be like, oh, bet. Oh, what is it's going back to TV 14? I may have to check it out. Now, does that mean the show will be good? Uh, that's that's a little toss-up. But if I'm part of the studio network head, you know, I'm charging on what shows are on, on my network, I'm making that change because you know for a fact your views are going to get boosted. Now, the question is, will the views remain the same? That's all depending on the booking. The next step in my process of on doing this, if I'm going to do this, if I'm already announcing it or the elite, I would definitely start easing the, the, I would start easing into it. I would let wrestlers come up with their own promos. Be a little edgy, but make it believable. Don't overdo it. You don't have to drop a whole bunch of curse words to say, hey, we're TV-14 now. Be more comfortable. Be Let the wrestlers come up with their own promos. Give them just guidelines, but let them be more edgy. Um, let the storyline start to get more serious, more, you know, more personable. You know, you can still have your comedy stuff. You can still have your funny stuff, you know, here and there. But definitely get in that serious bag. 
let it be known like hey we're 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 coming to play we're this, you're about to see some serious wrestling here you're about to see some serious storylines that's how you change it because it does no good to be tv 14 and we still get the same nonsensical booking none of it matters if it's going to be the same booking so we'll see how that plays out but comment down below let me know do you guys think this is the right direction for wwe do you guys think going tv 14 is in the right right way to help the overall product or do you guys think that being tv 14 is not really going to change anything as long as vince mcmahon is in charge and it needs to be the booking and the creative side that needs to change more than just the actual rating or do you think it could be a combination of both let me know i want to get your thoughts and opinions on this man this is going to be a hot topic for quite some time but i appreciate all love and support on the channel road to 90k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace